You're in a restaurant, the man next to you has stopped breathing, he's turning blue, what do you do? If you know the Heimlich Maneuver, you can save his life. Today, we'll show you how. And the creator of the Heimlich Maneuver will tell us about his latest quest to save people with AIDS and cancer. I'm Mary McDonough, all of this and more right now on McDougal MD. Hey, John. Hey, Mary. Got Excited somebody, about today's show. Yeah, I got somebody really, really, really important for you to meet. At least he's a very important man to me. He's one mm -hmm. of the few people I can hardly wait till he says the next thing because it's, the information is so exciting. And he saved more lives than any person in, in history. And not just by the Heimlich Maneuver, mm -hmm. which we all know him by, but by other things. And he's, he's still inventive. He's still thinking of new things to do. And the other reason I like him, and you'll, you'll enjoy this, is yes. because he's always challenging. He's always <laughs> challenging the establishment. <laughs> we like and you that. know, he beats them too. No, we even yeah, like that we're more. We're going to find out a lot about a lot about the things that he's accomplished and a lot about the things that he's working on. And uh, you're going to find this very exciting, challenging. Great. Great. I'd like you to meet my uh, good friend, Dr. Henry Heimlich. Thank you for traveling oh, all that welcome. way. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. Have a seat. The Heimlich Maneuver is uh, what you're known most about. How many times have you performed the Heimlich Maneuver? Well, first of all, that's not what I know most about. I have some things <laughs> at home most, I know a lot about. You're most known about. <laughs> you, people most know most you about the Heimlich part. Maneuver. Correct. How many times have you done it? Uh, exactly, not never once. Never, never. <laughs> no, that surprises it would be a pure coincidence. I'm just as happy because if it didn't work that time, it would oh. be terrible. You've never been in a restaurant and had that happen? No, never even seen wow. it. Wow. But I hear of the thousands and thousands all over the world, wherever I go. China, wow. I was to Iran this year and lecturing mm. there, and they knew about it. Uh, but I think everybody knows that the Heimlich Maneuver is used to save a person who is choking, choking on food or a child on a little object, and that's well established. But it now has many other uses, and I think we'd better get it out so we can you save tell us, yeah, tell us what, what those are. Well, the most recent and most important is that it saves drowning victims. You know, people have been taught to use CPR, mouth to mouth, for a drowning victim. Uh -huh. That's useless. Well, the they're lungs still taught are, it. Sure, the lungs are filled with water. That's why they drown. How can you blow air into lungs that are filled with water? So, how, what would someone do instead? They would just do, do they the, do the get the, the water, water out. First. Get, and the water comes out immediately, and you just continue doing it a few times until, until water doesn't come out. And then you can do mouth to mouth. Well, actually, they will mostly recover because you're pushing up on the diaphragm and you start breathing. Just something real simple. Ah. Yeah, in the few cases, you can then follow it with mouth to mouth. And you can also do it in the lying down position the person lying on their back, and you, and you kneel on them and press down, and I think everybody should learn that. Now, this is the important thing. Right now, 200,000 lifeguards every year are taught to do the Heimlich Maneuver to save drowning victims. Well, that's progress. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they're at a, under age five, the leading cause of accidental death is drowning. Yes. And it always cover, occurs in a home, either in a private in pool. pool. We know mm -hmm. of children who fall into a pail of water, into the bathtub. Yes. And so the, uh, there is no lifeguard there. The first one who can do anything is a parent or a neighbor. Uh, another adult. So mm -hmm. everybody, everybody, who knows how to do the Heimlich Maneuver, and they all do, to save choking victims, must simply know that if there is a drowning, they should use the Heimlich Maneuver to save uh, the drowning You victim. said there were other things that are, are the Heimlich Maneuver can be used to help. What else? Well, one of the most exciting to me, and I think it's going to save more lives than any other use, mm -hmm. the Heimlich Maneuver will stop an asthma attack. Will stop an asthma attack. Correct, and prevent one. I'll tell you about tell that. Tell me how. Now, this Pretty is very exciting. important. Yeah. In the United States alone, 14 people, mostly children, die of an acute asthma attack every single day. 14 mm. every day. And this can happen in the emergency room. Now, when you think of what asthma is, asthma consists of a narrowing, a constriction of the breathing tubes, the bronchi. All asthmatics have a lot of mucus, and that gets caught in the narrowed breathing tube. 
Now the people can breathe in around it, mm -hmm. so the air comes in, but when they try to breathe out, it's like a valve. The plug it's of mucus keeps stuck. it from coming out. So they distend with air, and then they can't breathe in or out, and that's how they die. The Heimlich maneuver very gently compresses the lung. In fact, you can do it even more gently than usual. Maybe you can even do it on yourself. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. and that's oh, most that's important. We, we just had a report of a 20-year-old college student who died in his dormitory room in college, and he could have done this to uh. himself were it known. Mm -hmm. And what it does, of course, it just expels the trapped air and with it the mucus, and the person breathes breathe. in and it's all over. And you said it can also be used with asthma to, to prevent the asthma attacks from coming out? Uh, yes, and that's most important. A lot of people now are doing the Heimlich maneuver to themselves, either this way uh -huh. or pressing, you against know, against a table or something mm -hmm. like that. We want a demonstration later. Okay. <laughs> and um, when they do it, they expel the mucus. They do it maybe once a week, so the mucus oh. isn't there. They no longer get the asthma attacks. They no longer wheeze. And this is mucus that builds up and that would normally not be expelled by a, a co by coughing. Right, or... and it would be get, ca get caught as mm -hmm. the breathing tube narrows. Mm. Yep. So by doing that, we will virtually eliminate and are in these people the need for these horrible drugs that are being used for asthma. You know, even the inhalators, they destroy yeah. the immune system and they cause heart arrest and so forth. This is new to you, I know, Mary, but one of the things that you need to know about Dr. Heimlich is, is that it took him, what, 14 years of fighting with the Red Cross to get them to start recommending the Heimlich maneuver as opposed to pounding people on the back, which Killed how many people pounding them on the back? Oh, just, it killed all of them because if they had a piece of food, say, stuck in their throat, and you hit them on the back, it went down tighter because the uh -huh. body moves right, forward, you see? Right, because it just lodges it And in so their it bed. killed all these people. The same thing happened with the drowning. It took hmm. just about as long. And that's all pretty new. But he, I want to hear he, more about this struggle. I, the 14 years, that's amazing. I, wanna, I want you to hear about more of his struggle. I, we'll Some be really right exciting back things to hear more out. about this. A lot more with Dr. Henry Heimlich. And coming up right after these messages, stay tuned. Thanks for watching Hello Channel. Learn the language of the internet travel, commerce, and diplomacy. Watch Hello Channel and learn English. Do it for yourself. I'll be honest, at first, I mean, I was really frightened. Can you imagine a man my size playing hopscotch? But you know what, it really got things going. I mean, we related. I just stopped what I was doing and asked my daughter what she wanted to do. Very good. Next week's assignment is to eat dinner together every night and tell me what changes in your family. Class dismissed. Give your family everything. Give them your time. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hey, welcome back. Before we go any further, I bet you're wondering how you do the Heimlich Maneuver, and who better to show us than Dr. The, Heimlich the himself? Oh, I mean, you know, I always want to work with the best, so <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to learn it, you may as well. Now, well, what happens? Well, now, first of all, what you're doing is you push upward on the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. That goes up into the chest, makes the chest smaller, and that gently compresses the lungs. There's no pressure buildup. It's just a flow of air, and that carries mm -hmm. out what the Heimlich Maneuver is for. It carries with it either the foreign body, the food, the water out of the lung and drowning, or the mucus out. Or the in, toy. Or the toy, toy. Exactly. I have a child. And you so. put your arms around the ch choking or drowning person. Mm -hmm. You feel for the bottom of the rib cage, and you make a fist. And look at this nice knob on mm -hmm. the thumb side of the fist. You put that just above the belly button, lower than see, most that's people lower think. Than I thought. Right. I thought it was higher, but then no? you could break a rib if you didn't go so low. That's right? correct. Okay. And, and it wouldn't do as much good. This is fun. I kind of <laughs> like this. But okay. your husband is here. <laughs> <laughs> you then press in one motion, inward and upward, mm -hmm. like so, and that causes the flow of air, which carries away the object. There's no pressure buildup, you see, just the flow of air, so there's no pressure inside the lung. Does it ever not work the first time? Does someone ever oh, have to do a second? Absolutely. A mainly, second pull? Right, mainly because they haven't done it before usually. And you get scared, it's and a panic you, situation. Correct. Yeah. And you must learn to do it in the lying down position because people are unconscious or drowning and you're using it. 
again, the person just lying on their back and you kneel across their thighs uh -huh. and you press in the same place, do the exactly the same and thing. And it'll come right up, just right. like now, the water. Children save their parents that way. The youngest child to save another child, by the way, was four years old. Oh. <laughs> and they can save them even if they can't reach around because they use their body weight and, and press they can it just in. Push right Any in precautions? Now. No, basically, Real you safe. just do it. Yes. And uh, you must know, too, again, let's repeat, you can do it to yourself. Yeah. And we've had many people, a lot of people living in, alone, you know, to these days. And if they're, they're choking, and they either press or right. they can lean against something like this in the same spot or the back of a chair, anything that will push the diaphragm up. Okay, this is, has been very innovative, very challenging, life-saving, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you're involved in that are going to save the next generations of people, some of the, the miracles. And uh, probably the most exciting thing that I've heard you talk about is malaria therapy, giving people an infection of malaria. Why in the world would you do that? Well, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? It does sound yeah. a little scary. You're giving yeah. it to them, and then what happens? First of all, there are four kinds of malaria. One of them is 100% curable. Matter of fact, two others are also, but one common form. The one you read about is the one that is not curable. So you don't use that for what I'm going to tell you about. Now, let's consider AIDS. What are they doing now? They're pouring these expensive drugs into people. And when has a drug cured? A virus, kill the virus. Now, AIDS is not curable, for sure. And you can't cure a cold. That's right. It's a virus, yes. right? So what happens is that the virus becomes resistant to the drugs. Mm -hmm. The virus locates in the brain and then the glands and so forth. What happens in AIDS? The immune system goes down. Then infections can take over and kill the person. What we're doing is boosting the immune system very rapidly. See, it's been shown that malaria rapidly boosts the immune system and it causes immune substances, interleukons, interferons, to increase very rapidly. So all we do is we give two to three weeks of malaria and then cure the malaria, which is, as I said, instantly curable. Oh. What that does, it boosts the immune system and you get what we call the CD4 cells, the immune cells the ones that kill the bacteria that invade, they increase. Now I can tell you what we have done is given two to three weeks of treatment. Mm -hmm. Then they have been followed, these patients, that malaria is cured, they've been followed. And it's been shown that we've now followed them two to three years. Oh, yeah. The CD4 immune cells stay high at normal levels all that time. But do the patients stay alive? Uh, oh, the patients are well, perfectly well. So you must so have people flocking to your yes, clinic. Yes, I would think. Well, you know how it is. You have to do a certain amount of treatments in order to, to So this is all still in the experimental stage. Very, very and we're doing it on grants and contributions. You know, the uh -huh. Heimlich Institute in Cincinnati is a nonprofit organization. So we have gotten some substantial grants to do this. I might say none from the government. We don't go to the government. <laughs> they could probably find the Heimlich <laughs> Institute in Cincinnati just by dialing up information too, That's couldn't they? That's correct, yeah. And you've also used it, you're starting to think, or at least starting to uh, maybe even try it on patients who have cancer. Well, it's the same principle, and we've had some very good results there. Uh, cancer, again, you and I, hopefully we don't have cancer because our resistance prevents its development. We have a thing called tumor necrosis factor, for example. This, too, is increased mm -hmm. by the malaria. Mm -hmm. And so what we are doing is building up the resistance against cancer in patients who have cancer. And then the body itself is able to, to respond and react and, and heal better. Uh, correct. Instead of just treating with drugs. And, and any cocktails. definite results on that yet? We have some very early results. I'm not ready to put that out yet, uh -huh. but, but it is definitely uh, scientifically correct. Well, when you're dealing with the two incurable problems, cancer mm -hmm. and AIDS, I mean, we ought to be looking at any possibility helping people, particularly one that is, and I bet this is the problem, it's so cost-effective and unprofitable. There is no cost. That's exactly right. Well, you can't manufacture it. That's right. That's an uphill battle. However, we're 
uh, talking now to people in Africa, for example, mm. uh, to start it in those regions because basically they have the means of doing it right this moment. You got malaria right at hand, don't they? And this was written up actually when I presented this at the National Institutes of Health and also at the AIDS conference in Vancouver. And on the basis of our results, UCLA, University of California, mm -hmm. Los Angeles, has joined us in this research. They asked if they could, and they have joined us. Oh, that's so great. we're moving so you're ahead very nicely. So making progress, and oh, you're getting the information oh, very out definitely. there. And particularly now that it has come out publicly that the drugs do not cure. Right, and they just I, I so hope your year. battle isn't 14 years oh, like it was. Oh, yes, let's let me hope tell you, that. by the way, this is not new. Syphilis of the brain could not be treated by drugs for the same reason as AIDS cannot because mm. there's a blood-brain barrier. Right, but they mm. did it very effectively and with they, malaria. They cured it and oh, eliminated it. There's so it. much to know. I'm so sorry. We have to go to a break. But um, after we come back, there'll be two surprise guests and another lesson in, in the Heimlich Maneuver. So don't go away. We'll be back. Hello. That's right, I said hello. I'm talking about an exciting new television channel that will change your life. My name is Ruth and I want you to be one of the first to know about Hello Channel. Hello Channel is designed to teach you to speak English. Anyone can learn. We offer something for everyone. You'll see programming for children, teenagers and adults, all on different levels. With Hello Channel, You'll hear, see, read, and speak English as you're watching entertaining television programs, making it easy to learn. If you've always wanted to learn English but haven't had a chance, Hello Channel is perfect for you. Start today and remember, for a brighter future, just say hello. <laughs> Yeah, very happy. I know. So welcome back. Uh, Dr. Heimlich, we've got a special surprise for you. We have brought in two guests, unbeknownst to you, that have a very important story. We have Jackie and Nikki Cavanaugh. Hi. And uh, Hi. Let's, well, let's start with you, Jackie. How did, how did all this happen? How did you get into Where trouble that you? day? What, what was happening? Well, I was at home laying on the couch, and I was sick. So my sister went to the store and brought me back a gummy bear, and it was really big. And so I was chewing on it, and they were in the kitchen cooking, my mom and my sister. And then um, I ran in, like I couldn't breathe, and I was choking on it. And so my, my mom started freaking. She was like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> mom. <laughs> <laughs> mom, okay. And then Nikki's like, I know what to do. And she did the Heimlich Heimlich maneuver. And um, the first time it didn't work, and then the second time it went shooting across the room. Uh, it did. The gummy bear just uh, came uh, flying out. Yeah. And, ha and how did you feel during all of this? Were you uh, scared? And, and really. but first of all, wait a minute. I have a question. How did you know? Yeah, where'd you learn when it? your mom didn't how to do the Heimlich maneuver? Well, um, uh, about two weeks before, I was doing a babysitting course from St. John's Ambulance, and they taught me. And when I was doing, like, I can't do that. <laughs> I'd be like, fr like panicking. I don't yeah, know. it's scary. So when the day come, right? Jackie was coming. She was going blue. So um, my mom started freaking, and I go, Mom, don't worry, I know what to do. And I <laughs> turn around and do the Heimlich maneuver. And did and because she was still standing. Yeah. So you came up behind her yeah. and did just like we did yeah. earlier. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's incredible, and you learned it in a babysitting course. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. It, it's just, a, you're made, such a hero. Make you feel wonderful. To, that's to, the most to, wonderful <laughs> thing, you know, just just to that's a touch special someone surprise who isn't for you. Yes. You both and, saved Jackie's life. Uh, it, you know, you know, I have to say this. The maneuver would have little value if there weren't people who used it. I mean, what good would it do? And it is so wonderful to see somebody who, particularly someone of this age, who has learned the Heimlich maneuver and then had the courage and ability to use it. Yes. And I'm, I think it, it makes you two very close, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 That's wonderful. That's so and after all this, I mean, you didn't have to go to the hospital or anything? Well, we were too, like, panicking and everything. We were all crying. Oh. And oh, so my mom, oh, yeah, oh, yeah right. so we didn't do anything because we didn't think about anything. Yeah. Wow. So. And you just immediately went right into yeah. it. 
And Nikki, you had a, got a certificate mm -hmm. for for what? What is the certificate? Um, for saving her life. Jackie's for life. Saving yeah. her life. Yeah, wow. Well, let's see it. There we yeah. go. Oh, that's something to be really proud of. Wow. Emeritus certificate is awarded. Yeah, that's really something. Oh, that's so great. And yeah. and how long ago was this? Um, two years ago now. And, and you haven't run into anybody else that has needed you to your help or assistance since uh, then. Nikki, when I get home to the Heimlich Institute in Cincinnati, I'm going to have them send you a Heimlich Institute Save a Life Award for what you've done. Oh, that's, oh, that's great. great. So you'll have two. You'll have two awards now. And now you know to do it for drowning victims. Spread that to the other children because a lot don't know that yet. It's very important. Do, do they teach the Heimlich Maneuver in your school at all? Yeah, and um, that's what we took at our school. Yeah, but it was a special class you took, though, yeah, in Baby we City. Had, we paid $20, whoever wanted to go, and then for three days after school, we went and did it. Mm -hmm. And from someone from St. John's Ambulance came and taught it to us. And they taught it to you. That, that's special. You had to sign up for it to yeah. learn it. Now, have you learned it since and taken the class? No. <laughs> you, you haven't asked you your know. sister to teach you? <laughs> what? No. Take it, though. You're taking the class yeah. now? That's well, wonderful. Soon, because it hasn't started yet. Well, well, only the best $20 your mom well, Let me ask started. you, Jackie, yeah. don't you think that you could do it on Nikki if she needed the help? No. Why? Because I'll be too, like, scared. But your sister, well, if she maybe. needed you... Mm -hmm. You, you, could, you could be there for it, couldn't you? Probably. We think maybe Dr. what we could do, hard, since Dr. No, Heimlich is a... here, maybe he can teach you. Okay. Can we do that? <laughs> and we can do that when we come back. Are you will? Is that okay with you? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Great. <laughs> there you go. That's great. Well, we'll be right back, we, and we'll teaching be teaching other Jackie too. the Heimlich maneuver after a, and a final word with Dr. Heimlich. So stay tuned. <laughs> Watch TV and learn English at the same time on Hello Channel. Yo traté de enseñarles a nuestros hijos acerca del amor y la familia. Pero ese día, mis hijos me enseñaron más de lo que yo les pudiera haber enseñado acerca del amor. Life's most important lessons are best learned in the home. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Welcome back. This is a life-saving award from St. John Ambulance. She immediately administered the Heimlich Maneuver until the candy is dislodged from Jackie's mouth, enabling Jackie to breathe freely. Well, Nikki, you're an expert on this, but we really need to make sure Jackie knows how to yeah. do it because you never know when you're going to get into trouble. <laughs> so, Dr. Heimlich, could you give us a little demonstration so Jackie can learn? Here's how you do the Heimlich maneuver now. You put your arms around the waist. You feel for the bottom of the rib cage. Come take a feel here so you know you're under the rib cage, not above it. You then make a fist and take the thumb side of the fist and put it just above the belly button. Grab your fist and press it <laughs> upward, just like that. Come try it, Jackie. Put your arms around. Feel good. <laughs> Tickler. Excellent. Just right. Good. Give it to her a little faster and harder now. Yeah, remember, she's your there sister you now. You've got to pay her back for something. Oh, that's great. There now you can feel it come out. That's yes, wonderful. Very just good. wonderful. <clears throat> Are you nervous about it anymore? Sort of. A little bit? Yeah, yeah you could well, do it. Well, don't you though. feel better now, Nikki, that Jackie knows how to do it? You never know when you're going to get <laughs> into very, trouble. That's very, very true. Uh, That's very, very true. Yeah. Uh, all, all the schools should teach this. Everybody I know. Should teach it. I so know. it's just so simple. I've, I've seen posters hanging in restaurants. Uh, it should be, you know, part of our standard education to save our fellow human being. You know, the, uh, I just last week held in my arms a three year old who, this past summer, had drowned in a home swimming pool. Mm. And the parents and three neighbors there gave mouth to mouth until the child was almost dead. At that moment, a neighbor, a young man who had been a lifeguard, came over and said, have you done the Heimlich maneuver? Oh, no. Oh, and that cleared he did it. Water came out, just did it twice. 
And last week I held that child on my arms. Oh, just oh, as you are the Jack. luckiest you doctor in the world. You get to help so many people, Dr. Heimlich. So, thank, thank you very much. Thank really you for so being fortunate. here with us. Yeah, thank it's you, Nikki and Jackie. It's such an honor. And it's thank great. you, girls, and for sharing your story with us. And we'll see you on the next McDougal MD. Thank you for joining us. Join us next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.